Oh, hey, hey, hey there, everybody. I'm your metal here today, and today we're going to finish this missile project. Alrighty, so last time we made the missiles, we programmed them, we made a pretty extensive behavior. Not that extensive, but pretty involved. And this happened. Okay, so what we can see here is that the missile does have momentum. It moves, it follows the player, it, you know, it does all that good stuff. Um, but when you have more than one, this one over here isn't doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It's just circling over here. It's actually identically following this one's movement while still looking right at the player. We can move all around. It'll still mimic whatever the first missile does. Now that's a problem. We want it to work like this one. You know, so that the boos, I mean the missiles will work like the boo and chase around the player like that. And all have their own individual movement as you can see. So let's do that. This is where it gets a little complicated and a little dicey. So, uh, let's get to it. Still going to be working just in the behavior. Let's get right into this. Let's create two always values and conditions and move them right up to the top here. That's your first step. Now save. You did good. Good job. Give yourself a pat on the back. Don't pat yourself too hard because you're going to need to spread a value in these things NID spread zero through it so first condition first event spread value zero in NID alright and then we're going to add to that over here start a fast loop and we're going to call it miss uh, missile ID oh that's too long and I spelled it wrong so let's just call it MID and we're going to run it going in here to retrieve data from object to count the number of objects of missiles alright and you did good save again that didn't do anything that's because we didn't incorporate these loops now what we're gonna do here is when we have more than one say we have four missiles coming after us at once all in different places problem is it's gonna pick the one that has the value zero and it's gonna make that one move and it's gonna make all these other ones move with it because they all have the same loop that they're going are obeying so what we're going to have to do is make it so each one of these has its own separate loop that it move on, moves on its own individual ID now that can be kinda of difficult because you have to put loops within loops and if you haven't done that before it can get a little tough so I'm going to walk you through that right after I create a better graphic for this um, bullseye thing there so that's where the missiles are trying to get to so we have to make them all have their own loop so that's what this MID this missile ID is going to be so instead of just having horizontal is different, vertical is different to run the movement loops. We're going to say on loop MID oops, make sure you put the oops, make sure you put the oops, make sure you put the quotation mark after that. And we're going to do another event. We're going to do compare two general values and we're going to put this thing's NID is equal to going special again fast loops get loop index MID and we're going to do that and that and and that so that when this MID works or run bleh, when this MID runs then it will start these loops only on this MID and it will only run them when this thing's ID is equal to the loop index. So let's copy this down. And what this does is on loop index 0, let's say on the missile that matches 0, it's going to keep referring back to just this one missile and do all that. Let's see how it works now. That's a problem. It doesn't work. Uh, let's go back in. Oh, no. You see, these things matter, these order, the order of these things. If you did this, 
what the heck did I just do? If you do this and reverse it, it's going to cause problems. Make sure that you want, make sure that you have the object that the thing is dependent on. In this case, it's the missile. See, it's dependent on the missile. So we want to have that first because it'll refer first to the missile and then say, okay, when this missile, specifically this one, has an ID that's equal to loop index, then it will do actions. I don't know specifically how it would edit or alter the actions, but it does, so make sure you do that, especially when you're working like things like this. For example, in my older tutorials, if you didn't do that right, if you uh, reverse the order, it might actually reflect, not reflect, it might actually result in a detrimental result in your testing and stuff. So we're going to have to reverse these because that's part of the problem here. Another problem is intentional, and I'm going to do it to teach you a lesson. But uh, hold on a second, guys, while I reverse these things. I'm just going to do that. I might cut this out because this is just going to get tedious. Now we got to reverse all this stuff. Uh, or I could just talk about something. Uh, how about Princess Light? Yeah, that game's taking a long time. You know what? It's because every time I think I'm making progress, I realize that I've done something wrong, and I have to refine the engine again, and it's getting really annoying, and I haven't worked on it in actually a little while. But, uh, yeah. I will finish that. Also, a fall tale. Yeah, let's not talk about that. So anyway, I just finished reversing these things, so it should work now, right? Alright, it, uh, whoa. Wait a second now. What is going on with these missiles, man? Something is wrong. As you can see, they're moving really weird. They all have individual movements, yes, but sometimes they get stuck going a direction, and, uh, yeah, like that one on the left, what the heck is happening with that? Well, that's a problem I did on purpose. Let's save it. This is an easy fix, but see how I did compare two general values? This is less specific than doing it this way. When just going straight into this thing and saying when this thing's value and ID is equal to the loop index, then the same thing happens. Do not use general values if you can point more specifically to the object. Actually, this is take two of this tutorial, because the first time I did it, I did the general values thing, and it took me about half an hour to figure out that that was the problem. When you do directly re referring to the object, then it works fine. So lesson is, don't use general values when you can use another method, because referring specifically to the object will work better. And look at me, I took all the frustration for you guys and now I'm giving you the fruits of my labor. Because I'm your meadow hair and I'm nice like that. So, make sure you don't use general values, you use the specific reference to this object. And the way you can tell if it's general values or if it's not, if you do general values, let me just do this real quick again, NID, equal to loop index. It'll just say NID this equals loop index. It should say NID of without the parentheses, without the question uh, quotation marks, question marks, yeah. Without these things, it should say of that. So, there we are. That's actually it, guys. We just created the perfectly individualized movement for the missiles. What you can do now, if you really want to, create this. Just, just some practical application. Let's just say this is a cannon. Just real quick, because I have some extra time, I might as well show something. Something nifty. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do, but nonetheless, I will keep that. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Hot spot in the middle. Action point right here. 
And there you go. That's the Missile Creator. And... Let's just make some basic events here. When this collides with the Bullseye, it actually will get destroyed. And let's just say every three seconds, create a missile at this thing at its action point. And we're going to set the horizontal add. This is the first uh, thing it starts out as. Uh, set it to three. It's going to start out going. Oh, wait. Change that to negative three. Start out going straight like that. And, yeah, see what happens. So a missile will all blow up when they hit you. Every now and then that thing will shoot out another missile. It'll be going full force to the left. And that looks tacky, because we should. When it creates that, let's just say move this to the front. So that's in front of the missile it creates. That'll make it look slightly better, like that. And there you go. So, yeah, missiles. And, um, if you want, you can post a video response showing your own practical application. You can use this for anything, not just missiles, you know. For example, now you see how we made this boo engine. And all I did really for this was made it so when the boos are to the left, when you press left, they will close their eyes. If you press right when they're on the left, they will reopen them. And, of course, it's individualized, just like everything else. That actually was not hard to do. You didn't even have to use fast loops. In fact, I can just show you the events. And if you want, you can copy them. This is just this part right here is all you need to make them close their eyes. So when you press right, this thing looks to the right. Press left, it looks to the left. When this thing is lower, they actually have to be farther than 16 pixels away from it so that they don't stop when you're like right next to them. What it prevents is well, it's supposed to prevent that, but, you know, it only marginally prevents it. See, so they don't close their eyes as soon as they pass you like that. That's what that was pre to prevent the plus 16 and minus 16. Alright, so that's advanced uh, momentum chasing enemy programming. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you understand everything. If you don't, you can send me a message or a comment. I will not promise that I'm going to be consistent in answering, but you can try nonetheless. And, yeah, I hope you enjoyed all that. I already said that, but I guess I don't have much else to say. So, that does it for this part. Next time we will get to chasing land enemies. This is where it gets really complicated. And, uh... Yeah, a lot of you should enjoy that. We're going to make an enemy that actually chases and jumps over stuff. I've never done it before, but I'm going to figure it out just for you guys. And I will see you when I do that. Now, this is your Meadow Hair for the day, signing out. And I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.